Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Shadow of the Colossus uh, with me, Oxpo, and thank you for joining me this time. Last time we defeated the second Colossi, and this time hopefully we'll be defeating the third one. I don't know, because I've been trying to record this Colossi for the last two weeks. I actually have five more recordings ready, but I've been recording this one Colossi for about two weeks now. We get to listen to the great ominous voice telling us thy next foe is a giant canopy soars to the heavens, and none of this is really important because we'll be learning about it in about five seconds or so. There's no way to really skip it. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't want to either because it is an important cutscene. Um. But yeah, we're facing the swordsman next, and <sighs> I don't dislike this colossi, but just the problem that I've where are you, Agro? Just the problems I've had recording him are making me really start to change my mind about him. Especially because I'm kind of disappointed because Mike, I I really like my commentary. The last two times I had to record it. But again, dropping like 500 frames, it's like 12 entire seconds. And I mean, yeah. I'm only losing commentary about the Rugrats and Fairly Odd Parents, which I'll probably go into this recording anyway, because, I don't know, I like to rant about those things. Because I like cartoons, man. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I figured yeah. I'm not going to cut out the riding sequences, because they're like yeah. two minutes long, and if the x-axis can stop being inverted for a second, I can show you these wonderful vistas that we're going past. Like, look at this. This is just picturesque. Especially, like, the Sky Bridge or whatever it's called. Fortunately, it's all just a straight line, so I don't have to worry about steering the opponent. But... <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing I don't like about this, which I actually say in the next episode that unless it's a straight line, the opponent is, const is constantly running into things, yeah. turning itself into a French bulldog, smashing its face up constantly against the door so it's so pug-nosed it's only cute in a hideous, ugly way anymore. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going on about. But no, yesterday was really fun because I came back home from Anime Club early and there was this radio station on like 89.7 though you something else or another um and you don't hear those any much anymore um i was talking to my girlfriend and she said yeah usually they're they're doing book readings or stuff on stuff on there and i'm like well it sounded like it was a play and it sounded kind of like a radio play because they had sound effects and everything um so i don't know if it was like an old one it probably was, because you had this black woman talking about black power and her revolution and everything, which made me think she was in the Black Panthers. And go underneath the water. You swim faster that way. At least I think. Um, wow. I have done this level so many times, I didn't even have to think about where we were going. I just really noticed. I just noticed that. I mean, you did not see me pull out my sword once and shine the light and be like, oh, which way do we go this time? Which I guess I should actually explain that. So basically, if you pull out your sword, oh, you can't really see it, um, you see how there's the glare around it? If you're looking at where a colossi is, it'll focus to a point. You can't really see it, but you'll see it in the other videos. Because I'm actually in the area where it is, it's just going to spread out because it's the area where the colossi is and i got to find them. But, um... And she was talking to this Jewish woman about how how bad the struggles were for the blacks and this again i think it was like around af right after world war ii or something because this jewish lady was talking about how bad it was for the jews and how she knew about struggle even if she was to be convinced otherwise and don't fall off i've spent like five minutes no no i spent like five minutes last time just getting up from here and it takes forever for this guy to swim so i don't want to fall down um but yeah, here's the first colossi. Uh, first colossi. 
first colossi. First colossi, we've defeated two giant lumbering giants already. What makes you think this is the first colossi? Well, well, I just assumed, seeing as he's the only one that really stands that tall. I mean, if you think about it, the first guy wasn't really that tall, and the second guy was on four feet, four legs, so he can really tell how tall he is. This is really the first guy that's actually colossal. Hopefully we can get to him fast enough before he starts doing his little dance. Because he's got to back up. Got to back up, buddy. Come on. Up against the wall. Put your hands where I can see him. Spread your legs. That's it. Basically what we have to do is stand on this metal, metal stone pedestal and let him hit us so that this happens. And his arm, his arm armor falls off. So now we can climb up his arm. I keep forgetting about this, but you know, seeing as I've done this like six or seven times already, I kind of think I know how to defeat this guy by this point. Come on. Don't want to waste my time with you. But uh, yeah, because they had sound effects going in the background, that's what made me think it was really a radio guy. Ooh, actually, we're pretty close. Get up, 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 get up. I'm gonna press triangle to get up. I forgot about that. I keep pressing X and he gets jumped. Just like I keep forgetting that the X axis is an inverted or whatnot. Roll, roll, roll. Dinner, dinner, dinner. Roll, roll, roll. Yeah, that actually worked out pretty well. Uh, and what we're only gonna do is we're gonna fall off on this side because he brings his little stone sword up to him. And if we don't, we go flying. We go, we go flying off of off of the mountain. You just climb up this way. But yeah, like I was saying, the last time I tried to record this, my favorite cartoons are always the ones where they do that old style. Like the, how they've been trying to reference the old detective movies that are black and white and stuff. You know, the ones that were originally based off of the radio plays. Like the smooth talking cool cop who won't take anybody's BS because he's got to solve this case, damn it. And he he doesn't have time to deal with his the rookie partner straight fresh from the academy, even though he got high marks and everything. But god damn it, cop. You're a loose cannon on the edge, but you're good. You get the job done. Oh, come on. It's like that episode of South Park where the kids are junior playing junior police detective. And then they get actually picked up by the detectives in the local precinct, and they end up doing this huge drug bust. <laughs> it's like everybody sees that they're cops and starts shooting each other, like all the druggies start shooting each other. And then their the chief comes up and he's like, "What are you doing, shooting up a, an entire place like that? You're you're a loose cannon cop, and you, you're you're bound to get fired if you keep doing that." And then. By the end, it's like everybody keeps shooting each other. It's like, oh, why are you doing this? You can't, you can't be a police officer that way. But you get the job done. <laughs> anyway, what am I going on about? Because I was, I was talking about real cartoons. Not that South Park's not a real cartoon, but it's, it's not a real cartoon. Um, it's a farce. Um, uh, but yeah, like the actual kids' cartoons. Those are my favorite episodes, the ones where they do the old black and white detective stories, like that episode of um, Rugrats, where uh, Grandpa starts listening to the old radio show and he opens up like his sock drawer or something. Ooh, I don't want to know what's in his sock drawer, but... <laughs> oh, that's so dirty. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but... <laughs> He opens up his sock drawer and he finds this bag of malted milk balls. He's like, Malties, that's what you we used to call them. And if you can see if you can see their pun coming from a mile away, 20 points to you because Um But yeah, they start doing one of their imagina imagination episodes where they just use the room as their imagination and Angelica's like the bad guy trying to steal the rocket fuel pellets, which are the Maltese. They hide him in the Maltese woodchuck. <laughs> the Maltese woodchuck. And, I don't know, just, it's just good fun. 
like my favorite episode of Fairly Odd Parents, as much as I don't like that show, is where Timmy loses Wanda and he does the whole black and white detective thing to find her, going around asking everybody, like, where's Wanda? Answer my questions. Where were you the night of the 28th? Um, and he goes to the docks because he gets a letter and Timmy's dad's there and he asks him, well, have you seen any suspicious, anyone suspicious around? He's like, it's me, I wrote the letter, why can't I be the bad guy? I mean, Timmy's answer is just, oh, dad, you couldn't be the bad guy, you're too nice. Like, you'd never do anything bad. And he's like, but I do do bad things, I jaywalk, I, I take tags off of mattresses and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm a bad man, Timmy. I don't know. I love Timmy's dad. Can we make it? Yes, we made it! Oh, that's cheap. I will see you guys next time as we float in the middle of the air. Take it easy, guys, and thank you for watching.